Today, I want to talk about how there isn't just billions of dollars out there in illegal shorts, but trillions of dollars, and how there's trillions of dollars in FTDs in one individual financial instrument, a financial instrument that Ken Griffin himself is currently shorting. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And I absolutely had to start by showing you these two messages that I received that make what I do all worthwhile. Two brilliant testimonials. So John is up over $1,000 in two days with the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group by using the many educational videos, real-time coaching, and the tips, ideas, and alerts on the fast-moving stock plays plus longer-term plays too. And he says, this is the best money I've ever spent and I have no doubt that it saved me thousands of dollars in failed trades. Easy Money says on his first day in the MMTG group, he went by my recommendation and bought some RVCN, around $2 per share, which today crossed over $9, and Easy Money made hundreds of percentage points in gains. But now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Kristen tweeted saying there's trillions in settlement fails, and regulators are hoping it doesn't come to a head on their watch. There's trillions of dollars in financial markets in both FTDs and illegal shorts, and when the penny drops, it will likely blow up the entire system, which the current regulators are desperately hoping doesn't happen on their dime. She said to understand the scope of the fraud threatening our financial markets, take the time to read this medium investigation by Brian James Barclay. Now this extract talks about the settlement fails and FTDs in Europe and says the stringent rules regarding naked short selling and trading transparency not only has no clothes, but they have in fact created a regulatory regime perfect for festering and concealing large amounts of fraud. It talks in more detail about how both US regulators and European regulators allow European-based hedge funds to illegally short US companies without having to report short positions, FTDs, or illegal shorts. Now, I don't want to read out this full paragraph and I don't want to read the entire article, but obviously I'll link Kristen's tweet down in the description below. And Peruvian Bull has also explained about the 10-year Treasury note, which back in May 2003 had the record for the most fails ever, reaching $1.62 trillion in one singular day. Now this is actually really, really interesting because just in yesterday's video, I was speaking about how hedge funds like Ken Griffin are currently shorting the 10-year Treasury note. And they aren't just shorting it with a small position, they're shorting it with the largest position ever in history, even more than they shorted back in 2003. For most of 2023, the 10-year Treasury note was increasing going against their short position, causing them big losses. Through November and December, the 10-year Treasury note did dip, but in January, it's been back on the rise once more. This extract says the 3.625% 13th of May Treasury note failed from June 2003 through November 2003, saying it briefly cleaned up in December and then failed again in January and February 2004. Remember, this was back in 2003 before the failed charge, saying at one point the weather fails reached as high as $1.62 trillion. Not $1.62 million, not $1.62 billion, 1.62 trillion, saying this security forever changed the landscape of fails and the repo market outright. And as I said, remember, Ken Griffin is currently shorting this very same treasury note right now in 2023-2024. Now, Biggums has also gone a little bit more in depth in terms of the settlement fails FTDs in Europe. It says Euroclear Bank, an international CSD with a direct link to the DTC, reported 183 trillion euros or an 8% fail rate on volume or a 15% fail rate on value. Clearstream Banking SA, a separate bank still with a direct link to the DTC, reported 576 trillion euros in settlement fails in 2022. Now, this isn't the number of FTDs in a single day. This is a cumulative FTD value across a full year. Now, theoretically, you're obviously not supposed to accumulate FTDs and add them together because a separate day of FTDs is always going to be different to the day prior and the day after. 
But still, even looking at this on a daily basis, $576 trillion divided by even 365 days, including weekends, is still nearly 2 trillion FTDs per bank every single day. That really goes to show how much the European Union or European banks and hedge funds are effectively aiding and abetting US hedge funds shorting US securities. Today was also another brilliant day in the MMTD Discord with RVSN running 135%. You can see I alerted RBSN in the pre-market when it was pushing up towards that $3.89 pre-market high. I then re-alerted RBSN when the market opened, when the high was breaking and when to jump in. And you can see Tony took three individual trades on RBSN making 20%, 20% and another 5%. Simon also made good profits on RBSN as well, and Ross took four separate profitable trades today as well, making tons and tons of money. As of course did Easy Money from earlier, making multiple hundreds of percents. So guys, if you want daily gains like these, be sure to join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group using the link in the description below. And I also want to explain why we will soon win and why AMC will soon squeeze and how these hedge funds are about to be blown out of the water. Not just from shorting the 10 year treasury note which is currently rising which is exactly what Citadel Securities is currently doing but also how they're shorting the stock market as a whole. So the Daily Shot tweeted saying the last time the put call ratio was this low things didn't work out so well for stock investors. So what this chart is basically showing is the ratio of short positions to long positions compared to the Nasdaq or compared to the stock market over a long period of time. So obviously through 2005 to 2020 there's been tons of call options compared to the amount of put options. What this shows is we're currently at an all time low in call options or an all time high in put options compared to the previous 20 years. This is also something I touched on in my previous video about how hedge funds are currently max short on the stock market. Which in history was obviously a good idea back in the year 2000 because the market crashed very shortly afterwards. And while that may be the case right now, we may be about to enter a market crash. The longer these hedge funds are max short on a stock market while the stock market is exploding, the worse it gets for them. While these short sellers remain max short on stocks like Nvidia, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, Coinbase, AMT and many others, while these stocks are setting new all time highs or at least new 52 week highs every single day, it just means they lose more and more money. And especially if these stocks like Nvidia, AMD and others run another 5%, another 10%, another 20%, another 50% before the market does actually crash, more and more short sellers are just going to get blown out of the water. Something I always preach in the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group is we have to wait for confirmation before taking a trade. We can't try and time a bottom and catch a falling knife or try and short a massive run, effectively trying to put a lid on a rocket ship. Catching a falling knife or trying to put a lid on a rocket ship is a terrible, terrible idea which will usually always end up with you being burned. And that's exactly what these shorts are trying to do. They're trying to short the stock market. They're trying to short stocks like Nvidia, which may be close to the end of its tether. But when Nvidia stops is anyone's guess. As I said, it could run another 5%, 10%, 20%, 50% 50 before it starts crashing. And if it does run another 50%, many shorts will end up going bankrupt. That's exactly why Doug Sifu, the CEO of Virtue, is praying that Hester Pierce takes over the role as the head of the SEC over Gary Gensler. Doug Sifu needs someone in office that will continue ignoring those FTDs, will continue ignoring those synthetic shorts, and will effectively let these hedge funds and market makers off the hook for margin calls. They did it once back in 2021 for Robin Hood and now they're going to need to do it many times over for these even larger market makers. I don't know whether Gary Gensler does specifically scare Doug Sifu or whether Doug Sifu just knows that Hester Pierce will give him even more of what he wants. Regardless, the SEC have done absolutely nothing over the last three years, but that's exactly why Doug Sifu needs to keep it this way and needs to keep the SEC on his side.
But ultimately, while the SEC can waive margin calls, the SEC can't waive outright collapses and outright bankruptcies. The SEC, the DTCC and the Fed couldn't just waive the 2008 recession and waive the 2008 stock market crash and waive the 2000 dot-com bubble boom. Many funds did end up collapsing and will collapse this time round as well especially as it seems that even more big companies like Google, Citibank or Citigroup, BlackRock and Amazon are announcing mass layoffs. And this article also explains why we'll likely continue seeing even more mass layoffs in 2024 as well. Now, obviously, I don't want to read through and explain the entire article, but you can get the gist of it. As interest rates remain higher for longer, which, by the way, interest rates now aren't expected to be cut during the March FOMC meeting, and maybe not even during the May FOMC meeting. As interest rates remain higher for longer, many more companies will be implementing layoffs. Especially because many of these companies like Citigroup have just been having their worst quarter and their worst year in the last 10 to 15 years. And again, that's going to continue getting worse in 2024 due to high interest rates. And that's why we'll see even more layoffs and even more collapses. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.